So the kangaroo criminal court trial regarding Donald Trump's payments to Sloppy Daniels for the NDA that she obviously violated has been going on for seemingly months now. The Democrats have been dreaming about this for years, but it's not going according to their plan. As Time Magazine notes, Sloppy Daniels humiliated Donald Trump. She just took the stand this week and gave all sorts of salacious details about their alleged incident. She also may have helped his case, they note. Tell us, Clown News Network, how disappointed were you after she took the stand? But the cross-exam, boy, her responses were disastrous. I mean, do you hate Donald Trump? Yes, of course she does. That's a big deal. When the witness hates the person whose liberty is at stake, that's a big damn deal. And she's putting out tweets, fantasizing about him being in jail. That really undermines the credibility. The fact that she owes him $500,000, $500,000, she, by order of a court, owes Donald Trump a half million dollars and said, I will never pay him, I will defy a court order. The defense is going to say she's willing to defy a court order. Why? She's not willing to respect an order of a judge. Why is she going to respect this oath she took? So I thought it went quite poorly. And her former attorney, Michael Avenatti, who is sitting in prison right now <laughs> on related matters, says that Sloppy falsified business records to avoid paying the Trump court-ordered legal fees because you may recall the entire case that Michael Avenatti filed against Donald Trump for her, they lost. (laughs) So she has to pay Donald Trump's legal fees, which are hundreds of thousands of dollars. Tell us Jeffrey Lubin, who was rehired by CNN despite his little incident on the Zoom call with some of his colleagues. Tell us how you think this case is going for the prosecutors. You know, because Michael Avenatti filed this libel lawsuit against Trump that the judge in California said was frivolous, he awarded attorney's fees to Trump, which is assessed against the client, not the lawyer. The the amount he now she now owes him with interest and penalties is six hundred seventy thousand dollars. She owes Donald Trump six hundred and seventy thousand dollars. You can see why that makes someone really angry. And I, th- there does seem to be a measure of injustice because her lawyer, who is now in prison <laughs> for other reasons, is responsible for her being in this gigantic debt, which is much more than the money she made out of this whole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor sloppy. But the point that he was trying to make was actually a good one in that she was a terrible witness. And to the jury, it's going to look obviously like she was trying to extort Donald Trump. And that this entire trial is a complete sham to try to pay him back for her losing that case and now owing him almost three quarters of a million dollars. I don't want people to get their hopes up, but there actually is a very good chance that this may end in a hung jury. Now, the odds of the jury as a whole all finding him innocent, probably zero percent. There's a very good chance that at least one of them is going to be a holdout and not go along with this sham. No matter how long the judge keeps them locked up and sequester, he's going to have to eventually admit, or may have to likely eventually admit, that it is a hung jury, which means that they will not have a conviction. Michael Avenatti himself admitted during a live phone interview on MSNBC that he gave recently from prison that he didn't want this case to be the first one tried because it's weak. Him and all the Democrats were counting on one of the other cases, like the classified document case, to be tried first because that one they thought they could get him on and that it would be more damaging because nobody cares what sloppy Daniels has to say or that Donald Trump paid this floozy some money to go away. But now there is even more bad news for the Marxist Democrats. And meanwhile, there's another breaking headline involving the former president tonight. The judge overseeing Donald Trump's classified documents case at Mar-a-Lago has now indefinitely postponed that trial. Is there any chance this now happens before Election Day? Let's get right to our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, live in Washington. Pierre, what have you learned? David, the likelihood there will be a trial in the classified documents case before the election is fading fast. Judge Eileen Cannon has officially taken a May 20th trial date off the calendar, saying there were too many pretrial motions and legal issues to resolve before a trial could go forward. So all of their hope rests on the Sloppy Daniels case. And even if he gets convicted, his lawyers are obviously going to appeal it, which is going to kick the sentencing can down the road until next year anyway. Here's MSDNC having a hard time coming face-to-face with reality regarding a recent poll from independent voters. 
interesting in this polling was more independents said that they worry about President Biden weakening democracy than Trump, 53 percent to 42 percent. What do you make of this? I find it shocking, honestly. I, I, I can't I can't, you know, make sense of that number. I wish I could. I wish I had some really great insight to it. But it, I, I don't know if it's an outlier or not, because the other numbers with independence and Biden are going in the right direction. So that may it be it. But also, just one thing I want to add on to what Basil said. I mean, what's next? Are they going to blame the fact that this trial is not televised on Joe Biden's poll numbers doing so bad? <laughs> oh, wait, what's this? You know, this trial's not on TV. You guys do a great job reporting what's happening. But if there aren't those images coming out of the courthouse, people feel like they know this story. Mm-hmm. We kind of we've heard about it for a long time. So it doesn't surprise me that they're not interested. Well, thank you both so much for being here, Basil. They can't turn the trial into the media spectacle that they hope because cameras aren't allowed in the courtroom. And so it's not damaging Donald Trump enough. What's your assessment, ABC? Always broadcasting crap. And Biden seems to be struggling with key demographic groups that he would need to win and win big if he stands a chance of being reelected. John, there is significant softness in the support for Joe Biden among core Democrats. In this poll, he's carrying black voters by 61 points. Well, that sounds like a lot, but he carried them by 84 points back in 2020. (laughs) Latino voters, a very slight Biden edge in this poll, but it was a 21-point advantage in the exit polls back in 2020. And among younger voters, under 30, we're actually seeing Trump with a slight edge. That was a big win for Biden last time around. It's particularly stark to see that difference among voters of color. Black voters under age 50, far less likely in this poll to say they're supporting Joe Biden than older black voters. Well, welcome to the Trump train, black and Hispanic voters. We've been trying to tell you for eight years. And now even CNN is reluctantly having to tell old Joe some bad news about one of the most important issues this election. So when you talk about the economy, of course, it is by far the most important issue for voters. It's also true right now, Mr. President, that voters by a wide margin trust Trump more on the economy. Uh, The cost of buying a home in the United States is double uh, what it was when you look at your monthly costs from before the pandemic. Real income, when you account for inflation, is actually down since you took office. Economic growth last week, far short of expectations. (laughs) (laughs) Consumer confidence, maybe no surprise, is... He's so used to getting softball interviews, he can't understand why she's being so mean to him. Not to mention the whole situation over in Gaza with the left eating their own. And now Michael Moore is warning Joe Biden to pull the plug on aid to Israel or risk losing the election. And that was last week. And old Joe is listening. And he now said that he is not going to supply any more weapons to Israel if they invade another region of Gaza called Rafa to, well, obviously, ethnically cleanse it. But they don't want to admit that's what their plan is. And so they're just using generic terms about another major offensive in Gaza in the Rafa area. And this is a very nuanced situation because you can be sad about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. You can be opposed to funding Israel or their obvious ethnic cleansing plans for the Palestinians. And at the same time, you don't have to support the lunatic protesters on college campuses across the country, some of whom now are having a hunger strike Palestine, like this woman. This is not a meme, by the way. I'm not going to play the video because it's just her rambling on and on. But obviously, she has enough reserves to keep this hunger strike going for years. And if you want to see some hot clips, commentary, blog posts, and memes that are a little too sensitive to include here on YouTube, then join my exclusive Locust community by clicking the link in the description below for $5 a month. It's a way to sponsor my channel and gain access to the members-only Locust community. It's owned by Rumble, so it's a free speech platform. It's like a private Facebook page, which I use pretty much as just my own private blog where I can vent and say all of the things that I want to say here on YouTube, but can't. So click the link in the description below, head on over there, Ed, check it out. <laughs>